Hello and welcome to an all new Marvel cast, Explosion Network's hub of all things Marvel, a place to talk about everything MCU and beyond from Avengers and Defenders to Marlene, Aloran, and Seth Falcon. My name is Ashley Hobley, Explosion Network's podcast host with multiple personalities, and joining me today is Ultimate Kira Marchant. It is I with only a singular personality. Um, yes. But it's a great personality, I can't complain. It's pretty uh, good. It's, it's, pretty, you it's pretty good. I you don't need multiples. No, I don't need... Well, that one, the one you've got solid. Exactly. I don't need in a conflict. <laughs> I don't need a god following me around. I'm just. Good. I think. I think this good. episode shows that having multiple personalities probably sucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's very. Um. It, it's yeah. It, it's uh. It, it's interesting. I'm glad the take they're going with this for this character. Yes. So today we're talking about the latest episode of Moon Knight, episode two, Summon the Suit. Directed by Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. Written by Michael Kalstian. Uh, with little time to react, Stephen is thrust into a war of gods as a mysterious partner arrives. Kieran, what did you think of this week's episode of Moon Knight? Uh, I thought this inter- this episode was interestingly paced. Um, considering where things were kind of finished off uh, last week in the first episode with the actual Moon Knight costume and, and kind of that... I don't want to say reveal, but the 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 switch between Mark uh, and Stephen. Now opening up with this one with kind of Stephen dealing with the repercussions of that, um, and you know the classic everything that happened to you nobody else can see because of, it's going to create conflict and ta da. Um, I thought you know what I I think Oscar Isaac and uh, Ethan Hawke both chew scenery in the show fucking fantastically um and mm-hmm. i i appreciate both of them whether that is uh oscar's steven who's a little bit more kind of uh eccentric in terms of just dealing with this issue and just his over-the-top nature that english accent continues to be a, a uh a i forget what he of... said towards the start of the episode but it was like Almost like an oblimey kind of yeah line. yeah. I can't remember and look, I appreciated said. that. I appreciated um, the security guard calling him a donut. I'm like, that's that's <laughs> so English. That's so that's so good. Um, but no, to just kind of, I feel like this episode is a lot uh, faster paced in terms of kind of moving between scenes and kind of escalating through everything um, at a reasonable quick pace. I think I think this episode I definitely felt like this was a six episode series, like it was um, <laughs> the, the pacing seemed to to pick up a lot more considering you know the classic thing that we get to every time it's episode two or episode three you get to episode three and it's like well fuck you're halfway through the series already, yeah. um, so a, a whole bunch of things happen in this episode to kind of um, escalate that through. I thought it was really interesting having. Stephen have his own variation of the Moon Knight costume, um, and mm. and kind of uh, having that as like a it's a more personal. This is the version more... you you liked, right? Yes, I liked this version. Uh, I thought it was interestingly different. Maybe all I'd seen like the versions I've seen was just stills of this costume, yeah. and I thought the costume in stills was really cool. Um, the costume kind of combined with Stephen's character, I was. I felt it was really weird. It, it almost felt like it was too much like Deadpool. Yes. Like there was this Deadpool esque nature to it. Like it was like the like the the British version of Deadpool. Um, <laughs> and I wasn't the biggest fan of that. There was several times the Colum- 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 version. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like it it, it 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 didn't sit the greatest with me throughout it. Um, I I really appreciate the stuff going on with Mark. I have a lot of questions about this whole Mark and Steven dynamic because I think we're going to get to the point where Steven doesn't didn't exist previously. I think I think that's the idea. Like I think that's, that's where my we're impression. Going. I think that's where we're going is that Steven is like a a weird manifestation that's happened. And Mark is like the original or something, because, like a repercussion or like something to keep Mark yes, in line. Because it it is an interesting thing that he has, like Mark has passports and stuff like that, which you could be like, yeah, that could just be fake. But it's like Kieran, he has a wife, <laughs> and he has a, no. Also, yes, 
a hundred percent. He has a wife. I mean, he that's has... the big re- that this. I feel like there was a lot of revelations in this episode, um, which was cool and like a lot of information. Like I felt like maybe I felt like maybe it was longer than last week. I don't. It, well, according to Disney Plus, it was like six minutes longer, but. Um, yeah, there was a lot in this episode, like, to, like, progress the story forward, whereas last week it was definitely, like, setting it up, setting up Steve and, and the situation and, like, kind of slow drip feeding you along. This episode was, like, a full mouthful of whatever liquid you want to equate to this show. I, I, feel, I, guess. I feel like like last week I said the pacing and the kind of the overall drawl of the show, the first episode made me feel uncomfortable and tense through much of it. I think this episode, much of that was taken away because of that kind of, that effort to provide information and to provide, like, I think we just got more information. There was less kind of uncomfortability. We got more from, um, I can't say the God's name and I don't know why. I don't think I ever really heard it properly. Heard it properly. <laughs> like it would always seem to kind of people kind of let the word like kind of fall Conshu, like there we go. Like maybe it's just that, how yeah. how you say the word makes it fall off. But um, yeah, I think the the duality between Stephen and Mark that started to be explored towards the end of this episode, I think, is a very interesting take. Um, it is also this kind of thing about Mark where you're like, I both think he's a good guy, but at the same time, there seems to be something a little off about him and the way he interacts with Stephen. Um, and then, yeah, combining that with this god that you're like, oh, he sounds like he's the good guy, but really he's he's just as bad, if not kind of worse in terms of the the threats he's using against Mark to keep him as the Moon Knight. And, um, yeah, I mean, pretty much threatening his wife is th- yeah, <laughs> what he's doing. His wife's so. going to be next. And, you know, in the revelation that Ethan Hawke was previously the... the that's a pretty Avatar, big deal, I think, as well. Which I thought was the, cool. Um, I think... As soon as it he said it, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That that seems like he knows a lot about what's going on here. It was, it was quite amusing, him, like, him predicting what, you know, yeah, he would say. <laughs> yeah, he would say. And as I said at the start of this bit was that Ethan Hawke, I think... Ethan Hawke I just find really fun to watch. Like, there's something enigmatic about his... His portrayal of this um, cult head figure, um, oh, yeah, super, super culty vibes. Like it is, it is. It, it, he's one of those cult figures that you kind of see, and you're like, "Damn, I can now understand why people would sell their souls Fall, to this man, yeah. or, or like kind of sell their lives to this this mission he is preaching." Yeah, absolutely. Like all the like group, whatever, like sentiment in that like weird building like making all these people learn three languages and shit it's like yeah, no, that's that's weird freaky shit but yeah I, want none I was very confused during that scene when they started speaking um mandarin because i was like wait are we still in london where did we go where <laughs> <laughs> and it is just the explanation of uh yeah it, it is yeah yeah but how how are your overall feelings of this episode yeah, I, I liked it. I think we're continuing. It's continuing to go in an interesting direction. Like, like I said, we get. I, get, I think the picture's a little bit clearer, but not like super clear. Um, clearly, the scarab thing is important. Leads to something, <laughs> and we kind of know what the bad guy wants to do by resurrecting some dead or imprisoned god of some sort, which seems like a bad idea. That that, that doesn't seem like it's going to work out for anybody. Um. And yeah, I guess we're just going to see this duality between Mark and Steven throughout the season, which is going to be interesting. I think it's kind of scary, like, you know, Steven, uh, Steven at the end, like, getting to that point where he's in the reflections. Yes. And like, yeah. it's almost like a sleep paralysis. Sounds like yeah. almost like a sleep paralysis. Even, even his fear in those moments of, oh, I, I can't, I can't really move like this. I can't, I can't do yeah. anything. Like, I can only, it is, um... I always thought it was interesting. I know there was some issues with the um, the portrayal of this kind of condition in the the split movie, um, but I appreciated mm. the the analogy that they used throughout that movie of uh, somebody sitting in a chair in like the light or sitting in the light, and everybody's in a circle around that person. 
um mm. being like they're you know they're still watching and they're still partaking in what's going on they just have no control over it yeah. um and i think that's interesting i would just yeah i'm interested to find out more about what is the go between the two of them clearly this isn't a long-term life thing is steven some kind of safety mechanism that mark created um to try and escape um this life he's in or there's obviously like, something do, because well there's also the layla of it all like clearly he's like he left her in the lurch started divorce proceedings never contacted her or anything um but clearly they had like a full-on life together uh it seems like he was mark was part of special forces so i'm at in af in egypt so it's that's it doesn't seem like something Stephen would have been not remembered you know what yeah I mean? and, and like stuff like um you know she had already seen the the moon knight suit She'd already yeah, she knew. have yeah. some of it. They'd already obviously been on adventures in the past. And she were, knew what they the scarab were after was. the scarab suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. I think that maybe what's happened is something has kind of, um, on the last time they were together, either the um, it has been insinuated that that she's going to be the next Moon Knight or uh, or Avatar and. Uh, he has created the Steven um, personality to kind of separate himself from her, thinking that he mm. could live a normal life as Steven and then Mark could switch over when he wants to, to do Moon Knight things and to, to go gallivanting whenever he needs to. Um, I just think there is, there is a lot of mystery around this so far. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Uh, we'll also say it's surprising they went the direction of these uh, jackal things being invisible. That kind of made for an interesting fight sequence where these two people are fighting something that one of them can see and the other one can't. And then to show it to us with the invisible jackal was interesting. Uh, even with the, the people on the bus commenting. And I, I, the, I appreciated time. it, but at the same time I was like... There was a point midway through that section of him fighting nothing where I was like, okay, can we just have more shots of the jackal or can we stop having these shots of him fighting nothing? I think it was nothing? cheaper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was cheaper. It's I cheaper to it, edit out a guy in a green suit than to edit out a guy in a green suit and then put a jackal on top of it. Yeah, that is that is fair. Um, I think I did catch like the, the, the shot of Mark's Moon Knight climbing was very jarring in terms of I think the CG is still... Uh, very uh, lacking in terms of the the polish that we're used to seeing from mm. Marvel uh, produced shows, and and whether that be the normal MCU or even other MCU Disney Plus TV shows, um, which hopefully that means they were kind of saving all their budget for something else um, later down the track. I don't I don't know, um, but yeah, that was that was a bit a bit meh. Um, but I think this is a solid second episode. I do agree with what we said last week of wishing that this episode had been released alongside the first episode, and they released yeah. it as two, and then go into one episode releases. Um, Actually, that, that that's a fair criticism. I think we would have had a, like a better idea of what the series would have been with yes. the first two episodes. But yeah, I guess six episodes they kind of want to stretch it out as long as they possibly could. Um, but yeah. I really enjoyed it, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do in Egypt. What? The place that we've never, the MCU has never been before. Hopefully it's better than uh, what they did in one. I Hobbit. feel like we have, technically. Have we? I feel like like maybe it was featured in Eternals or something, or... I That's think it true. was featured I in Eternals. In Eternals. Yeah, no, I uh, think they were... No, I'm just going to say they've been to every country at this point. I'll yeah, they've been... The... Well, I don't say every country. There have been a lot of places. Um, but yeah, it is an interesting couple of shots towards the end of just like him waking up in the bed and then it kind of weirdly switched to a shot of him sat on the floor drinking, um, while but I of... think it's Steven in the mirror. And then... Oh, that's why I was confused. There yes. we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then right, Mark's right. like, yes, just drinking himself yes. to, yeah. I don't know. That seems like a bad idea. If you get too drunk, then you'll lose control, right? Lose control. Maybe there is the drunk personality. Um, 
it's interesting that obviously that seems like he has abandoned Layla again. Um, mm. because I don't think if Layla was there, I don't see him being in that position or kind of drinking as heavily. But um, no, there is. It's an interesting point that because maybe this this kind of point of Mark trying to completely shut out Stephen and these shots of drinking. You maybe expect this from an episode four and episode five ending where it's like the, this is the, the down before the come up. Yeah. It's it's Um, like, yeah, they go their separate ways and like, then they come back together. Yeah. It's, um, I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes across the next four episodes. And, you know, do we, uh, do we stay in Egypt for a bit longer, or is that Egypt just a one episode thing? I thought it was very strange, and this is only because of the, I guess the the bits and pieces we've had of Moon Knight in the past, or the stuff I've seen in comic books. There was something very strange about Moon Knight being in London, where I just think of Moon Knight, and I think like just like the classic like New York, like because Marvel mm. throughout its comic books is very it's Americanly yeah. central. Um. So, it's uh, it, it's it's interesting to see if we're heading in that direction, where we're we're heading towards it. And I'm also I'm interested to see how self encapsulated this this show is because we I was reading an article uh, a couple of days ago about uh, Oscar Isaac's contract for this. Like he was only on a f- contract for the show. Like it's not a impetuity kind of contract. Yeah. Um. So it's a bit up in the air if you know if they will be doing a season two, if he will be kind of featuring throughout other movies and stuff. That's more something he's sure if they give him a giant to. sack of money, he'll be happy to. Yeah. Yeah. I think do he's some a, stuff. I do get the feeling he's might be a bit wary of Disney since the uh, the Star Wars trilogy. The Star Wars thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. the The Marvel side is obviously a different. Dif- different to the Star Wars side, but I guess it's Disney overall, and uh, he does have like other projects in the works and stuff. Like I think he's meant to be in the Metal Gear movie and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, they'd be silly. It's uh, depending on how success- how the season plays out, they'd be silly to like, yeah, not do more with him. I'd be interested to see if do you reckon we get like a cameo or an interaction from another member of the MCU at any point in this series, or just like a. A throw-in moment to like in maybe the end, at the end of this season. It would I be. Don't think- it would be interesting to see if they would like put in anything that denotes the timeline of this ep- this movie TV show. Like yeah, where this takes place. Like exactly. whereabouts this takes place in roughly the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, because I think where we, I think we've mentioned this, especially when we were talking about No Way Home and talking about uh, Hawkeye, um, that. Where we used to have that that predictability of uh, okay, it's all happening in real time. In real time, and it's linear. And and okay, we're gonna start peppering in some prequel stuff with Captain Marvel, and then it's like, oh, since Endgame's hit, it's like, oh, by the way, we don't give a fuck about linear anymore. We've actually yeah, we already jumped ahead five years. We don't know what when stuff is. (laughs) Yeah, we we have purposely moved ourselves out of line of your current timeline. So good luck with this. Like it, yeah, it is just a um, along. yeah. It, it'll be interesting to see where this show ends up in terms of that kind of stuff, and where the Moon Knight character ends up. Yeah. So sorry to Stephen for losing his job. Like <laughs> bloody Stephen. Yeah. At least we don't have to deal with her boss, his boss anymore. That, what was wrong? I don't. I don't. I didn't yeah, know. She was with that. just. <laughs> she was it's she was mean. classic. Just, you know? Oh, she'll she'll appear again. Stephen will have to randomly go back. He'll to that get. Museum. He'll have to go back to that museum because yeah. that's the that's the place that the, they need to summon the something the god like that, or whatever. Or there'll be something there, or there'll be some reason, and <laughs> and Stephen will redeem himself in their eyes or some shit, and then they'll those people will see the jackals he'll find, and stuff. He'll be then, able to come yeah. to a guide just like you always wanted. Alright, let us know what you thought of this week's episode of Moon Knight by going to explosionhammer.com slash Twitter or jump into our Discord at explosionhammer.com slash Discord. If you want to help us out here at All New Marvelcast, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Podchaser. Give us five stars anywhere you can give us five stars or just tell people about the show. 
And if you liked this episode, thoughts about it all, head on over to a Kofi page at explosionnetwork.com slash support. All right, make sure you watch next week's episode of Moon Knight and join us for another all-new Marvel cast. Thank you.